Welcome to Entity Data Live at the Open. I'm joined today by Paula O'Connell, Head of Sponsorship and at the helm of this event for the last couple of years. And joining us again, Gareth Lewis-Jones, Head of Consulting for UK and Ireland. Welcome to Royal Liverpool. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. It's always so exciting when it's Open Championship Week. It's a, a really exciting time in, in the, the calendar. God, isn't it? And the last couple of days have been absolutely exquisite. I mean, we started off with some really good weather, but let's be honest, that's what, not what we're focusing on. We're focusing on the play, but the build-up as well to this was really incredible. And I had the opportunity earlier today to speak with the head, uh, global head of NTD Data and the uh, head of diversity, inclusion and equity. And we had a lovely conversation about how important this event is. And yeah, let's have a look. It's a pleasure to have you here, uh, Mr. Nishihata. How shall I may address you? Oh, just call me Carl. Oh, well, fantastic and welcome to the Open and Royal Liverpool. Thank you. I'm in Liverpool. Thank you. How is the Open for you so far? Because uh, we, NTD Data, started a sponsorship almost 10 years back. Mm -hmm. And every year we buy technologies improving. So we now are providing this data, NT data war. Every year new technology comes in and it's fascinating the, all the members are, uh, around the world. So I'm very uh, proud of that uh, NT data war. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to look, watching the new data world. And over to you, Claire, um, your vice president here in UK and Ireland. Uh, how much effort goes behind uh, the open and bringing the data experience? Huge effort across the globe, honestly, not just in the UK, through our teams across EMEA, into Japan, of course. I mean, I just saw the data wall today for the first time. It's incredible. Mm. The size and scale of it is just immense. This is leading sports technology, and it really is incredible. So we're hugely proud and mm. grateful to all the people at NTT who've worked on this and making it an absolute success that it is. And uh, speaking of colleagues all over the world, I mean, this is a global company, and I've heard there is this entity data group. Please tell me more about it. Yeah, we've got the entity data group uh, consists of two groups. One is entity data Japan, and the other one is entity data Inc. And the last October, the entity limited, based in headquarters in London, joined entity data Inc. So as a whole entity data group, uh, we have a 190,000 members all over the world. And we are providing the services more than 50 countries and regions. And Claire, uh, with employees all over the world, how important uh, is culture within the company? Absolutely essential. Honestly, we are a global organization and the combination of nationalities mm. and people from different countries makes us a kind of naturally diverse company, if you like. But the road really to true inclusion is about in bringing everyone along, making sure that everyone's included and every voice is heard. Mm. I think if we look back 10 years ago, diversity and inclusion was something additional, something mm. bolted on that HR used to look after. Now it's not the case, and rightly so, it's completely essential to business success. We see time and again that the companies that are the most successful, the most innovative, are those that are leading on diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's exactly where yeah. we want to be. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, innovation comes from the DEI, right? Yeah. If there are uh, no difference, no uh, diversity, you cannot have the innovation. So that, in that sense, DEI is essential to have the businesses for future. I think you're right. It's that evolution again is the word of of diversity and of inclusion. It's diversity of thought, diversity mm -hmm. of ideas, and ensuring that everyone's included to bring those ideas forward. That's where we find an yeah. innovative workforce, mm -hmm. and that's how we really engage with new clients is through innovation. Mm. So absolutely crucial. Great. I completely agree. How important it is that um, all the different cultures are able to bring new things together and how everybody feeds from each other. And then within 
women, what is um, entity data? How does this affect women in the company? I mean, like lots of IT services companies, we're still focusing on gender representation. Yeah. Globally, we're mm. increasing year on year the yes. women in leadership yep. and mm. women across the organization. We're not where we want to be in every country, I think no. it's fair to say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But we continue to focus not only on women in NTT, but on all of our other inclusion communities as well. Yeah. Yeah. I am a, I mean, I'm a woman, I'm a professional golfer, and I know how important uh, sponsorship is in the women's golf mm. global in, in general. Uh, how I've heard that you're championing the AIG Women's Open. Yeah, we got uh, last year we started mm -hmm. the sponsorship. Now, before that, we'd like to have a uh, women's sports sponsorship, but just last year we started. We need to have more uh, uh, women's sports uh, mm -hmm. sponsorship because we said, uh, the, uh, well, I say 3G, the generation, geography, mm -hmm. the, I mean, uh, gender. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't, we don't have no uh, uh, boundary for those three DGs because this is NTT data. So definitely, we need a uh, uh, women's sport and also the young generation, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. we attract all them, all the generation. So that's why we started the AIG uh, Women's Open. And I think it also speaks to our responsibility externally as well as internally for us to use our brand yep. as a platform to have those conversations about mm -hmm. advancing and amplifying women's sport. You're right, we're sponsoring the, the Men's Open and it's fantastic to be sponsoring the AIG Women's Open. We just yep. ran a series of interviews of champions in conversation with um, professional golfers, female professional golfers, and women in business. Mm -hmm. I completely love that series. You've got the two successful um, women speaking to each other about the successes and the challenges in their careers. It's a really great series of conversations. Well, I'm looking forward to the rest of the week here at Royal Liverpool. Thank you very much for joining us today and enjoy the golf. Thank you. Thank you very and much. Thank you. Obviously, we'll be stopping by the data wall. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I love how they're sponsoring the women's event and obviously bringing so much inclusion with women and all the activations they're doing. Well, do you know what? I mean, diversity, equity and inclusion obviously is really important to us. But really, this is about who we are every day. And that's, that's not just a marketing message, a message or something that we want to say. This really is what we live. We work with hundreds and thousands of different companies around the world who serve millions of different customers. When we think about challenges, problems that need to be solved, honestly, they're all a bit different. They're all, they've all got their own uniqueness to them. And as a result, diversity of thinking and really inclusive behaviors so that we can bring the best together for that particular situation, the solution that's required there, that's really inclusion in action. And I love how here at the Open, with I mean, we've got so many players from so many different countries, but not only that, there's people from all over the world coming this week to watch the golf. And then, I mean, what better way to watch the golf than in front of the data wall? Absolutely, um, we're incredibly proud of our NTT data wall. It really is the iconic part of our event activation. and. It's something that's really become the, the mainstay um, of the fan experience on site um, at the Open and where we're, we're showcasing our technology, which we're really proud of uh, for this year. What I really like about it is this is something which has developed, but also it shines a little bit of a light through the, I guess, the innovation that's come from lots of different types of thinking, lots of different experiences that we've enabled for fans but also some of the thinking that we've brought from that diversity across our organization, which is now going to help us help our fans think about sport differently and different experience in the future. Yes, well, I before anybody got out there, I had the opportunity and sneak peek <laughs> behind the data wall. So have a look and let's see what I learned. Hi, and welcome to the Fan Zone here at Royal Liverpool, home of this year's Open Championship. The fans are out, the sun is out, and the beer is flowing, and all eyes are on the Entity Data data wall. But before 
anybody got here, I got a sneak peek behind the data wall. Join me. So this is the Entity Data Control Center, and it's where all the magic happens. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hey, Emma. How are you? Hi, Steve. Welcome to the NTT Data Wall cabin. Thank you very much. This is where we control everything from. The information starts out on the course, so there are scorers out there who relay back to a central control room each shot from every player. Is that all the data collection points? This is the data coming in, as we see it. That's then prioritized into our event scheduler. That then tells us information about each of the players, what they've holed out on the last hole, whether they've had a birdie or an eagle or a double bogey. That then becomes a news item. I can show you the, some of that. On the screen here, which is a 3D model of the entire golf course. How do you create this 3D modeling? That's, well, initially it's done through LiDAR scanning, which is laser scanning, 3D scanning from a drone that passes backwards and forwards over the golf course. And then some very clever people knit all that together into a full scale model. Then we add the textures and the kind of final touches to it, make it as realistic as we can get it. So these are sort of the different screens that you'll see on the big data wall, right? Correct. And so we have a sustainability. So as part of NTT's coverage on the data wall, we include the RNA's sustainability project as well and supporting that. And so we've made a number of films that kind of highlight that and show kind of statistics over the course of the championship as to various aspects of sustainability, like transport, for instance. So using the trains, using bicycles, various things like that. So what we're talking about here is everything that happens in the digital world. Correct. And now what happens? Well, we have to build the wall. It's a big physical structure. It starts with huge metal truss frame. It's then weighted down with 22 tons of water ballast so it doesn't fly away in these strong coastal winds, which is then clad with plywood. Then we put a beautiful big LED screen in it, uh, which is 20 meters wide by five meters high. And then around that is a graphics wrapping, which kind of finishes off and brands the NTT data wall. Well, that's impressive. That's a massive screen. And now what's next? Well, now we're ready. Uh, we can go live. And there we are, live. Perfect, so the open can now definitely start. Officially. <laughs> You have some very talented people working at NTT Data, but what I love the best about the data wall is the sheer amount of information that gets brought in and then just comes out in just amazing graphics and amazing ways of engaging with, uh, with the information that's available to sort of bring stories out. Yeah, I mean, I think we've learned a lot over the last 10, 10 years. So we've, we've had it now at 10 Open uh, Championships, uh, which was first introduced actually here in, in Royal Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing to now come back full circle. We're back here um, at Royal Liverpool. Um, and I think that's a really good opportunity for us to, to look back and, and, and reflect, really. You know, we look at how um, the sport has changed, society, the technology we mm -hmm. use, um, and that's all been impacted on all of the evolution throughout the 10 years because we look to, to improve that year on year. Well, I think when we look at fans and how that's changed, fans and the way they engage with sport um, has really, really evolved over the last 10 years. As a, as a golf professional, you're, you're very familiar with that. And I think in particular, the need for data um, that has completely changed from, from 10 years ago. And there is a real, real need for, for that. And that's what, what, what fans are always looking for. Um, to understand a lot more about the strategy and the choices that the players and their coaches uh, are making. Um, and as a, as a big golf fan myself, I, you know, I understand the, bit, the importance of, of data and being able to look across the course, understand what, what's happening. Um, and, and whether you're a fan on site or at home, it's not possible to see every player, every mm. shot. But with data, uh, we can give fans that ability to be able to... I love it. that experience. Yeah. It's just really exciting for I me. Mean, as a golf geek myself, it is just being able to see every single shot on the app or sat in front of the data wall. It's just 
really yeah, nice. E exactly. And I think what we're particularly proud of is, is those data driven stories um, that we present in a, in a very interesting and, and compa compelling way, um, which we often refer to as our, our secret sauce. Um, and I guess how we're effectively driving data further at the open. I really like that. I mean, the open as well is an opportunity to sort of bring fans together, you bring in people from all over the world together, but also you get to invite your clients here who actually get to see the technology that you're bringing. And mm. actually like there's, you can actually touch it because people talk about technology and it's a very abstract concept, but here you kind of get to feel it really, like you see it, you can touch it and you can interact with it. You're right. Um, one of the great things that we've been able to do for our clients is, yes, show them the data wall, and then go on an experience behind the wall to understand how it works and what happens to bring all of these just sheer vast amounts of data streams together to make them sense. Wait, so I'm not the only one getting sneak peeks? <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry then, mate. you want to see what was in there. But, um, but then we're able, obviously, back in our patrons' pavilion, able to show them our digital human, but also there are some other experiences that they get which they can then share with the fans as well, uh, notably actually around our sustainability. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is a, a topic that's really important to us um, as a business. So we're really, really proud of, of the work we've done with sustainability, working with Cardiff University mm -hmm. on this topic around sporting events um, and with the RNA, um, the RNA as well on their Green Links initiatives. Um, we are getting to see that on the data wall. Absolutely. That's information that people will actually see. Out exactly. There. So we will have um, sustainability insights that will appear on our data wall um, over the four days. Um, and, and I guess the aim of that really is to uh, make sure that fans are much more well informed and, and make better sustainability decisions. Um, so we're really excited about this initiative and something we really want to build on in future years. Yeah. I love how basically you're working and interacting, but it's like very closely with the RNA and I guess yeah. Yeah. with uh, all the other partners of the Open cool. to sort of get all this information out and how sort of this kind of joins together you yeah. and clients and how, I mean, I guess this is part of what entity data is. Oh, completely. I mean, one of the things which is really exciting about what we get to do, whether it's consulting or systems integration, honestly, it's about solving problems and helping people understand, deliver, and live through change. And that's really where that collaboration comes in. It's about thinking differently. It's about that data helping us with those stories that you talked about, so that people can, first of all, form an understanding of what might be possible. Secondly, try things. Maybe try things and fail, and then try, fail better, and then deliver something fantastic. That is what really innovation is for us. But we don't just keep that internally. We, we can't. Because this is for our clients who serve their customers, and their customers live in the real world. And that's really important for us here at Entity Data. Now, just doing things might be one way. But the entity data way is to do things together with our clients. We like to be as seamless as we possibly can with them, which will mean if you come and visit us on client site, you will sometimes find it difficult to understand who actually is entity data and who the client might be. We often call it wearing the client's t-shirt because that way we can really work properly together for their challenges so that they can make change happen and we can make a better world together. I love exactly what you're saying because it just ties in perfectly to what we're just about to watch, which is how innovation and your clients are joining together here at BMW. Let's have a watch. And have you fun with the car? Yes, it's amazing. It's really amazing. It's a full electric. I like that. So we are approaching uh, the Innovation Lab. Uh, last time it was May when I was here at the Innovation Challenge. Really to see if there are any updates. So I'm really excited to be with you here.
Great, I really remembered uh, we started, I think, Mike BMW, Intel and NTT. And you did a fantastic job involving all the universities, bringing Microsoft also as a partner. So it's a really high attention in the market and the great visibility. But Ralph, you know, it is a strong collaboration about BMW and NTT. I believe it was the success factor for this innovation hub. There's something happening with the robots. What's on going here? The so young people make uh, training on the robotics. They're programming the robotics and one of the use cases in the Innovation Hub is to uh, make the connection with 5G to the robotics. Microsoft has cloud technology. We connect this robotic to the cloud. Yeah. So that was one of the first use cases we do. The second is Intel for the edge devices. And 5G is installed here. Cloud technology is a new way to connect robotic. It's also a very important thing in the future. It's really cool to have that innovation lab here in the real environment because it's quite easy to test it, to have the people here all around. And you know, when we here test it, then we can roll out to the other plants. And that is very important for the Innovation Hub. We don't only development things for BMW plant, thing or thing. We development it for the whole BMW. Hey, Bernhard, good to see you. Ah, Rolf, nice to meet you. Hello. Nice, nice to right. see you. Gerhard, how are you? Wonderful. As you are the head of the training for the production technology, so how important is the Innovation Hub for you? Ah, the Innovation Hub for me, it's very important because on the first hand, I get here new innovations. I get 5G antennas. I get a surfer. I get this wonderful area here. And you know, the young apprentices come in touch with it and then they inhale it and they live it. It's great. I think that's a big benefit for us. And also, if the young people get in touch with NTT and other companies, they see this life is more than BMW and the world becomes bigger and bigger and that's good for our world. Okay, so you're happy. I'm more than happy. Thanks, Ron. Thank yeah, it's amazing. Thanks, Thanks for the partnership. What I, what I really love there, I think it really brings to life um, the long-term uh, relationship that we have with one of our largest and most important customers, which mm. expands over three decades. Um, and we're also particularly proud that that's also expanded on the golf course as well, um, and where we brought our innovation and expertise and fan engagements a few weeks back at, at BMW, um, and obviously taking to the next level here at the Open. Yes, I think... Uh... I mean, definitely, we're definitely seeing it this week here at the Open and how yeah. the screen is bigger. It's, uh, there's more fans out there. And I mean, the yeah. golf that's going to happen over the next couple of days is just going to be, like you said, full circle to all the efforts that you've been putting mm. with to bring yeah. out entity data live at the Open. Yeah, and I think on that point of going full circle, I mean, I'm absolutely uh, rooting for Rory McIlroy uh, <laughs> as an Irish person. And taking back that point about go going full circle, it would just be incredible to watch him being crowned champion golfer of the year on our data wall, making history um, as the first multiple winner of this event at Royal Liverpool. Gareth, who is your takeaway to take the Open at the end on Sunday? Well, you may be going for Rory. I probably ought to go for somebody British, but for me, it's going to have to be Matsuyama, the entity course, data course, brand ambassador. Well, obviously, I'm going to have to go with the Spaniard and, well, John Rum. Uh, so hopefully he's lifting the claret jack at the end of this week. Uh, but we'll have a bet going and we'll let yes. everybody know Complain. what's happened. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today and Thank have you. a fantastic weekend. Thank you. Yes, we certainly will. Excited. Thank you. Thank you very much to everybody joining us and all action happens this weekend. Thank you for following.